Hi everyone, welcome to the webinar and workshop series conducted by TCS in lieu of the upcoming SES exams happening in May 2024. My name is Nick and I'm the lead tutor and evaluator for SES at TCS. So uh, let's uh, look at the session plan. So first things first, I will be highlighting what you need to do to uh, develop a positive mindset uh, before your exam. As you know, you just have uh, two or three days until your examination. So in these uh, upcoming, uh, you know, final days, you have to, you know, develop a high level of confidence because as per the CMA examiner, if you're confident about your skill set, then uh, chances of you passing your SES exam is extremely high. So with that in mind, I will be uh, sharing last minute tips with you to ensure that you walk into your exam with a positive mindset. And in the second part of uh, today's um, um, you know, workshop, I will be opening up for a Q&A. So if you have any questions, you can raise them. And if you have any last minute doubts, you can uh, you know, clear them by uh, raising your questions and concerns. Okay, so let's uh, you know, try to understand what you need to do to maintain uh, a higher level of confidence or a positive attitude uh, um, you know, in the upcoming days. So before the exam, it's best to rest your mind and body. So by now, you should have uh, completed your five mock exams uh, because if you adhere to our study plan, you are expected to uh, attempt a mock exam per week. So if you had already done it, kudos to you. Uh, then uh, in the upcoming days, uh, you should rest and you should not focus uh, on uh, develop, uh, you should not focus on attempting mock exams uh, again. Instead, simply focus on redeveloping answer plans. Because if you uh, focus on redeveloping answer plans, focused on all five mock exams, you can also redevelop answer plans um, focused on the free mock exam. If so, uh, you will be redeveloping answer plans focused on six mock exam mock exams in total. So, um, if you have uh, you know time at your disposal focus solely on redeveloping answer plans over and over that's the best type of revision you have to be involved with um uh, because if you do so it's as if you are covering the entire syllabus you are reminding yourself how each syllabus area uh, is tested at your real exam and you are revising your answer structuring and by doing this you can easily pass your uh, SES exam. So don't waste time trying to uh, go through your past notes. Uh, don't go through revision cards and whatnot. Don't try to learn theory. Instead, focus solely on uh, redeveloping answer plans over and over. Um, um, if so, it's as if you are covering the entire syllabus. And do not refer to any study material, mocks or answer plans uh, on the day of your exam or a day prior to your exam. So for instance, if you are doing your exam on Wednesday, you have to stop all your work by Monday night. You have to relax on Tuesday because um, as I've mentioned throughout these uh, webinars and workshops, um, the SEMA examiner is trying to replicate a real life corporate environment. So in a real life corporate environment, if you are to function um, as a successful senior finance manager, then it's best that you walk into office with a rested mindset. And it's uh, better to have a higher level of, uh, or, or uh, it's better to be open-minded, especially given the fact that uh, your application skills are tested heavily at the SES exam. Although you need to learn theory, when developing answers, you should not develop highly theoretical answers. Instead, you are supposed to utilize your theoretical knowledge when developing answers, considering what's highlighted within each scenario. In order to walk into your exam with a positive mindset, with an open mind, it's best that you relax or, or you know, uh, you know, take a break a day before the exam, uh, if that is the case. Um, give me a second, please, guys. Someone is on. Okay. Um, so I, I was talking about, uh, you know, stopping all work a day prior to your exam. So once you stop work a day prior to your exam, you are resting. It's good to uh, rest your brain rather than, uh, you know, being exposed to uh, exam stress closer to the exam uh, rather than trying to do everything under the sun a day before the exam rather than trying to attend mock exams, refer to answer plans, refer to study material. You should start resting. And uh, it's best that you think um, that you are the senior finance manager at Safewell because you are supposed to play the role of a senior finance manager at your exam. So a day before your exam, if you keep 
you know, uh, thinking that you are the SFM of your chosen company, then it makes your life easy to come up with the best type of solutions, best type of recommendations and conduct the best type of evaluations. And it's quite normal for students to feel negative uh, closer to the exam. You might be feeling this type of negativity right now. You might, uh, even if you had uh, completed all five mock exams, under exam conditions, uh, you know, it's quite normal for you to think that uh, you have not completed your preparations fully. Uh, you will always uh, keep thinking whether you have missed out on any elements uh, uh, with regards to preparations and you'd try to go through revision cards or refer to your past notes and whatnot. You'd try to, you know, reattempt mock exams once more. If you had completed all your work as at now, simply focus on redeveloping answer plans. Uh, you know, even myself, when I was a student, I have felt this you know, even when I've completed all my preparations, I, I usually, when I was conducting studies, um, I, I was involved with self-study. So because of that, I had to adhere to a study plan. I created a study plan by myself. And even after completing all preparations, two or three days before the exam, I still felt that I have not done enough. So you will feel the same way. Uh, there's absolutely no point of trying to go through theory and whatnot instead if you feel that you still have, uh, you know, things to get done, simply focus on redeveloping answer plans. However, you should stop all work a day prior to your exam. That's of utmost importance. If you look at, uh, you know, extremely successful people, uh, it could be corporate, um, you know, citizens or uh, businessmen or sportsmen, sportsmen and whatnot. All these individuals, you know, um, a day before uh, an important meeting or a day before an important game uh, or a sporting event, they will take a break. They'll do all the hard work, you know, leading up to um, the game day or leading up to the important meeting, leading up to the important discussion. However, a day prior to the, uh, you know, important event, they will take a break. Why? Because it's of utmost importance that you rest your brain because if your brain is well rested, then it will function appropriately at your exam. And it's best that you, uh, you know, uh, be open-minded uh, uh, in the upcoming uh, days, uh, because if you're open-minded, since your practical decision-making skills are tested, since your application skills are tested heavily at the SCS exam, uh, you know, having an open mindset will be extremely beneficial for you at your real examination. And during the exam, it's best that you, you know, maintain the same type of positivity you can only maintain a positive attitude if you were you know positive in the uh, uh, if you will be positive in the upcoming two or three days so do these things to um, you know build a positive attitude if so you will uh, be in a position to carry forward the same type of positivity uh, uh, you know uh, when attempting your real examination. So during the exam, in order to ensure that you are positive across three hours, stick to the exam technique routine, which we have practiced so far. So as per what I've highlighted in the third webinar and throughout the workshops which I've conducted, I've highlighted this. Uh, you need to allocate 30 minutes to um, you know, read and develop the answer plan. So five minutes, I said that you should allocate five minutes to read through the scenario. Then, uh, the, you, then you should allocate 25 minutes to develop something called an answer plan. And once you have an answer structure or your answer plan at your disposal, it makes your life easy when it comes to expanding your answer plan. So the remaining time, um, which is 30 minutes, uh, 25 to 30 minutes should be allocated towards expanding the answer plan, thereby coming up with the fully fledged answer in paragraph form. So. I hope you would have uh, practiced this when attempting the mock exam. So, you know, replicate the same methodology at your real exam, because if so, you are conversant with a certain technique, which will ensure that you structure your answers appropriately. You are, uh, you know, adhering to a technique uh, which you have practiced so far. It's best to, you know, stick to the same type of techniques which you have practiced when conducting your preparations at your real exam as well. So in order to maintain a high level of positivity, um, you need to stick to the exam technique routine. Don't deviate from it. 
uh, believe um, in the technique which we have practiced, believe in the skill set which we have uh, uh, gathered uh, when conducting your preparation so far, and replicate the same methodology at your real exam. And it's quite normal for you to feel stressed at your exam. You know, if you attempted the mock exams under exam conditions, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, you know, however much prepared you are, the examiner is definitely going to, you know, include one or two subtasks with the intention of throwing you off your exam strategy. So there will be one or two subtasks uh, um, where, you know, you would find uh, uh, it, it extremely difficult to uh, develop uh, good answers. You will, when, whenever you are exposed to a certain subtask, uh, which is developed with the intention of throwing you off your exam strategy, then you will encounter exam stress. So in order to, you know, uh, keep moving forward, in order to be successful at your SES exam, you need to know what to do to manage your exam stress. So I highlighted these things in the fourth webinar. And, uh, you know, I wanted you to, you know, practice these techniques when attempting each of your mock exams. So if you had, uh, you know, practice these techniques, then now, by now, you know what to do to manage your exam stress. Whenever you feel stressed, you know what to do. So let me reiterate what I highlighted in the fourth webinar. Uh, if you feel stressed, drink some water. It will uh, be extremely beneficial because it will help you uh, calm your nerves. Uh, that's the first step which you need to adhere to. Uh, however, in certain instances, especially if you are attempting the mock exam at home, and not, not the mock exam, your real exam at home, or if uh, in, in certain uh, uh, exam halls, they will not allow you to you know, take a water bottle. Uh, if so, you can't do this. Uh, however, in certain uh, exam halls, you will, be, uh, you will have the opportunity to uh, take a water bottle if so. Whenever you feel stressed, drink some water and close your eyes and breathe slowly for two minutes. As I mentioned earlier, the CMA examine is not just testing your knowledge or your application skills. Uh, the CMA examine is trying to figure out whether you are capable of managing stress because as a senior finance manager, you should be able to manage stress. If you're working at office, whenever you are exposed to some type of stress, you can you know walk off your cubicle, uh, or your workstation, you, some people are into, uh, you know, smoking a cigarette, or you can spend some time with your friends, you know, have a snack whenever you are exposed to extreme levels of stress at work, but at the exam, you cannot do that. So the examiner is trying to figure out whether you are capable of managing your stress levels. If so, you are, um, you know, capable of uh, carrying out uh, um, or, or becoming a management accountant, uh, becoming a successful management accountant. So as I mentioned earlier, the examiner is not just testing your theoretical knowledge and your application skills. The examiner is trying to figure out whether you have the capability of managing stress. So whenever you are exposed to a certain subtask or a question which is meant to throw you, throw you off your uh, exam strategy or your exam technique, close your eyes and take uh, uh, you know two minutes, uh, take a break of two minutes close your eyes and focus on your breathing because as I mentioned in uh, the fourth webinar, um, at an exam, you are supposed to come up with the most rational type of recommendations or carry out the most rational type of evaluations. So if you are to be rational, you have to utilize your prefrontal cortex. Our brain is divided into three main parts. So uh, the front part of our brain is uh, known as the prefrontal cortex. So if you want to be rational, you have to, you know, think using your prefrontal cortex. However, uh, whenever an individual is exposed to extreme levels of stress, what happens is uh, the prefrontal cort cortex will switch off and uh, the functionality, brain functionalities will be switched to something called the amygdala. There's this small portion of our brain, which is known as the amygdala, which gives us the fight or flight response. So, when you are expected to utilize your prefrontal cortex, when exposed to extreme levels of stress, what happens is the prefrontal cortex will switch off and the brain's functionality will switch to uh, the amygdala. And when that happens, you will panic. And because of panic, you will you'll be, you'd experience something called brain freeze, where 
you are trying to read something but nothing goes into your head you are trying to develop answers but you cannot come up with uh, you know something rational so whenever you are exposed to something like this always remember you need to do everything under your control to switch off your amygdala and once you switch off your amygdala brain functions will again shift to your prefrontal cortex. So there's only one thing which you can do to switch off your amygdala, that is to focus on your breathing. So close your eyes and breathe for two minutes. Uh, focus, on, uh, fo fo focus on your inhaling and exhaling. When you are inhaling, um, you have to inhale through your nose. And when exhaling, you have to exhale through your mouth. And always when focusing on your breathing, focus on the entry and exit points when you are involved with breathing. So focus on the tip of your nose when you are inhaling and focus on the tip of your lips when you are exhaling. That's the only way to switch off your amygdala. So whenever you are exposed to exam stress, if you do not do this, you're, you, know, um, um, uh, you are uh, you know, uh, operating out of panic. And when you are panicking at the exam, your brain will constantly keep telling you to you know, uh, come up with quick, answers with the intention of finishing off the exam as fast as possible because no human brain likes to be under stress so whenever we are exposed to a stressful element or a situation the brain tells you to you know move out of such an experience so in order to make sure that you are serious at your exam that you are successful at the SES exam whenever you uh, you are encountering stress you have to focus on your breathing to overcome uh, these type of uh, stressful situations and uh, you know some sometimes what students uh, will do is um, before each task um, I've uh, you know encountered students uh, who'd uh, you know focus on their breathing for two minutes why is this the case because if you look at our brain how and how it functions our attention span is just there for 45 minutes beyond 45 minutes we cannot focus on the same thing that's how our brains are uh, supposed to function. So it's best since uh, the time allocation per task is 60 minutes after you are done with a certain task before moving on to the second task or the next task. Focus on your, close your eyes and focus on your breathing for two minutes, then start, um, you know, uh, developing the answer plan for the second requirement or reading through uh, the question pertinent to the second requirement. If you do so, it's as if you are refreshing your brain uh, before attempting each task. So these are the best practices which you can adhere, uh, adhere to. I hope you would have practiced these things. If you had practiced these things when attempting the mock exams, then uh, you know what I'm talking about. You know how beneficial these techniques are. And simply by replicating the same uh, uh, techniques at your exam, you can overcome exam stress. So always remember, it's not just about your theoretical knowledge and application skills. You have to manage your stress if not, you will be unsuccessful at your SES exam. So now you know what to do when you are encountering stress at your exam and you can actually you know, uh, implement these things in your real life as well. Whenever you are exposed to some type of stress, uh, your amygdala is um, you know, functioning. So you have to switch off your amygdala and the only way to do it is by focusing on your breathing. And... Uh, at the exam, whenever you are exposed to a certain subtask uh, which is meant to throw you off your exam strategy or a certain subtask uh, um, which is extremely hard, this leads to negativity. So in order to ensure that you maintain uh, the same level of positivity throughout the exam, always remind yourself that you just need 80 marks to pass. You need not score full marks 150 out of 150. Instead, you can screw up two or three subtasks. That's quite normal. As I mentioned earlier, the examiner will definitely include two or three subtasks with the intention of throwing you off your exam strategy. So even if you do are clueless about uh, the type of answers you are expected to develop, focused on you know two or three subtasks, still you know, always keep reminding yourself just that you just need 80 marks to pass or as a percentage, you just need 54% to, you know, pass your SES exam. So do not, uh, you know, feel negative just because, um, uh, you know, an extremely hard question is thrown at you. Instead, keep moving forward because if you are able to handle stress 
across three hours, across the three tasks, then chances of you passing the SCS exam is extremely high. And if you had done your homework, if you had uh, conducted your preparations appropriately, always remind yourself, uh, whenever you feel negative, always remind yourself that you have done your homework. So keep moving forward because most successful students, uh, they do not come up with the best type of answers. Instead, they are capable of managing exam stress. They are by, you know, developing uh, the best type of, uh, they, they try to develop the best type of answers focused on the, uh, you know, uh, comfortable sub subtasks. And if they are, they, if there's uh, a certain subtask, uh, which is extremely hard, you know, rather than worrying about it, it's best that you, uh, you know, um, focus on a subtask, which is extremely, um, you know, uh, which uh, uh, subtask, which you are extremely conversant with and try to come up with the best type of an answer. And as I mentioned earlier, you know, there is no right answer at the SCS exam because it's uh, the quality of your answers depend on how you uh, build your arguments. So even if you are clueless about, uh, uh, you know, what type of answers you are expected to develop, try to give your best shot, try to come up with uh, justified answers uh, because uh, although at the exam, although you might think that you are not too uh, conversant with uh, a certain theoretical element or you are clueless, although you think that you are clueless about uh, uh, the accuracy of the answer, as long as you justify appropriately, as long as you, uh, you know, build a well-rounded argument, you can easily pass your SCS exam. Okay. And during the exam, give your best shot. If you think like an SFM, you are well poised to give your best shot. You'd come up with the best type of recommendations and uh, you'd provide uh, the best type of evaluations and it's best that you are open-minded. So I that's exactly why I highlighted these things in uh, the fourth webinar as well. I do not want you guys to uh, uh, focus on predictions, you know, after going through uh, certain messages which came through the uh, SCS WhatsApp group. Uh, you guys are asking about variants, how variants will be tested, how many variants are there, whether a certain variant is uh, dedicated uh, for one single day or will, uh, or, or you guys are asking whether students will get a mix uh, of variances, uh, variants rather. Uh, there's absolutely no point of uh, focusing on variants. There's absolutely no point of uh, thinking about predictions because as I've mentioned throughout these uh, sessions, the same examiner is trying to replicate a real life corporate environment. So in a real life corporate environment, you cannot predict the type of issues your company is going to face and the type of opportunities uh, which your company is trying to exploit. So it's as if you, you walk into office until you read through your emails, you won't know uh, what type of, uh, you know, uh, sh suggestions you are supposed to uh, develop or what type of responses you are supposed to provide to your senior management or your board members. So since uh, at the exam, a real life corporate environment is uh, replicated, don't try, try to predict anything because as a management accountant, you cannot predict the type of issues you'd face when running your own business or when, uh, you know, um, uh, you know, functioning as a management accountant, a board member, or a CEO at your given organization. So don't try to predict anything. Instead, build a high level of open-mindedness. So in the upcoming days, I want you guys to focus on redeveloping answer plans over and over with the intention of covering the entire syllabus and uh, significantly improving your answering technique. Other than that, don't do anything else and take a break a day before your exam uh, stop all your work and rest your brain and at the exam stick to the exam technique routine which uh, i've highlighted and hopefully which you had practiced so far and uh, you know whenever you are you are feeling some type of stress you need to do something to overcome it focus on your breathing and keep moving forward because if you are in a position to keep managing exam stress and keep moving forward across the three hours then um uh, you can say goodbye to your SEMA examinations. You need not go through uh, a stressful uh, uh, preparation process once more. Once SEMA is done and dusted, you can focus on your uh, corporate life or you can you know, focus on developing or starting your own business. Okay, so having said that, um, I'm moving on to the Q&A session and I'm going to uh, pause the recording. 
All right, folks. Thank you very much for those uh, questions. I hope I addressed everything. And um, uh, if you want to contact us, you can do it via our website, which is www.studyatcs.com or email us on uh, info at studyatcs.com or WhatsApp us on this number. And I invite you guys to follow us on our social media handles, um, especially YouTube and TikTok, uh, because uh, the recorded versions of these webinars and workshops will be uploaded to our YouTube channel. And uh, on top of that, the recorded version will be uploaded to uh, our exam platform or the student dashboard under paid and free content. And on top of that, via TikTok, you will gain access to um, uh, mind map which covers the entire pre-scene. So if you keep watching these three TikToks, uh, which we have developed, um, you can keep reminding yourself about what's highlighted within your pre-scene document. So it's a good summary. Uh, it just takes uh, five to seven minutes of your time. So on a daily basis, until your exam, if you keep watching these three TikToks, you'd know what's highlighted within the pre-scene. You need not do anything else to memorize uh, pre-scene information. So having said that, it brings us to the end of the webinar and workshop series, which we have conducted, uh, focused on May 2024 SCS sessions. I hope you gained something out of these webinars and workshops. And I want you guys to be confident if you are sitting for, um, you know, SCS exams in May. Be confident. Believe in yourself in the upcoming days. Don't try to do everything under the sun. Don't try to do too much. Instead, solely focus on redeveloping answer plans and stop all your work a day prior to your exam. Rest well. Think that you are the senior finance manager at uh, Safewell. And when developing answers, whenever the examiner is trying to deflect you from your exam strategy or whenever you encounter a certain subtask, which is extremely hard, um, just, you know, close your eyes and focus on your breathing and... Uh, you know, keep moving forward because if you are able to manage your stress across these three hours, then you are in a position to pass your SCS exam. So I wish you all the very best and believe in yourself. If you do, you will definitely pass your SCS exam. And always remember, you just need 80 marks to pass or 54% to pass. So even if you screw up two or three uh, uh, subtasks, you still can pass. So all the very best, and I hope that you will become ACMAs and CGMAs in the future. Thank you. God bless you and take care.